Today I'm going to show you how I got uh, Nakios monitor set up on my Ubuntu 15 workstation. So I decided to install it from uh, the source code. So I had to install first Apache, MySQL, PHP, which is, which is uh, just needed for to run Nagios. Obviously, it's a web-based system. So yeah, so I had to install LAMP first. Then I had to set up the Nagios user. And then I had to uh, download and compile, I mean, and compress, compile and build the Nagios core, Nagios plugins, and Nagios NRPE. So after doing all that, I finally got this website running, which is basically the Nagios uh, web interface. And yeah, so what I've done, I also have another uh, Ubuntu machine, which is uh, happens to be a Ubuntu server. And it's actually running at this stage. I'm going to show you that it's actually uh, set up properly, and we can we can ping it. So the IP address is uh, 65. We'll just do it through the through the name host name, so you can see it with your own eyes. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm not able to see because there's no DNS resolution. That's okay. All right. Anyway, so th that, that, that's the machine we need, and Okay, now that we have this, I'm going to do some little things like FTP to it. So, just to show you guys that it's actually working. Uh, user, here we are. So, we can have a look where we are. We are, yeah. So, we're going to be inside the main user. Right, so, this is the machine. We are in. FTP is working. We can see through the Nagios interface, it says, yeah, FTP working, no worries. So what else can I show you? We can also do SSH. So we're going to do SSH. Just to show you guys how this is working fine. Okay, so here we are. This is the machine, Ubuntu Server 1. This one here. And yeah. So now what I'm going to show you is actually how to set up new services on the agent, which will be in this case the one to save a one, and that once that's set up, then Nagios can communicate with the agent and it can get all the data that needs. So if I can find the command here, one of the commands that I'm going to need is going to be a little file, not Samba one. I also install Samba in this server. I wanted to make the most of it. All right, so. Not this one either. Pseudo nano, not this one. I've been playing with it for quite a while now, so a lot of commands happening. Uh, which one was it? It's pseudo nano that's going to open up the file that I need to show you guys how to configure. So, not this one. Jesus. Okay, we're getting there. So, it will be something like a pseudo nano. Uh, Nagios, that's the one. This is the one. Okay. So, all right. Now, what I need to show you here is that you need to actually allow access to this machine through not only the local host, as we can see here, we have the 127, that's the loopback, loopback address. We also need to specify what is the private static, in this case, a P address that we're going to allow this server to be monitored from. So that's the private IP address. And we also need to specify which is our Nagios server that's going to be allowed to play with this. So that's the one. Okay, so that's what needs to be done from the server. Apart from obviously having all the ports and all the services running, such as FTP, SSH, whatever we want to monitor, obviously it needs to be installed and with the proper firewall configuration. So we're going to exit this. Now that you know that that's all you really need here. Now I'm going to exit this uh, SSH. Okay. Now, next thing I want to show you is another command. See if I can find it a bit quicker this time. Should be on top. There you go. So this here is actually the configuration file for this agent, the one to save a one that I want to monitor. Each agent that you want to monitor needs to have one of those files, .con, .cfg. And that needs to be sitting on that path. Use the local Nagios ATC service and then one for its agent so we're gonna go hit yep 
I like to use nano for my editing. You can use whatever you like. Uh, nano is my preference. Anyway, so here you have declared. I mean, I have declared my host, which I gotta specify the name. So this will be the group. So under Nagios, you can actually have different groups, as I can show you here. So you can actually you have multiple kinds of servers like Windows servers, Linux servers, whatever. You can have it here under host groups. So by naming by putting this here and giving it a name of the group, you can yeah, you can control them all in one place, Linux server. So obviously the host that I'm running now is Linux as well. And that's why you can see it's already automatically being put in here. And that's what I thought I'll put in the in the group so we can all see them at once. And yeah, so then we have the host name, which needs to match your current host that you want to monitor, an alias and description, whatever you call it, uh, address, which is the private IP address that needs to be pretty static. Otherwise, you go crazy trying to work it out. Okay, then that's all uh, pretty default settings. I mean, you still have to specify them, but this is just pretty random. I did change the check in table to one minute because I found that it was taking too long to refresh the actual uh, status of the service so anyway so we have the all these settings here okay sorry i made a mistake by use we use this we just say what kind of uh, host it is it is in this place here where it says host groups that you actually specify the host group that you're gonna link it up to okay and then from here onwards we're gonna de uh, just define our services in this case i got the ping service which is just going to tell me if it's on or off pretty much or i mean the connection internet connection of this uh, host agent to the internet then we're going to have or to the network then we're going to have the ssh service which is basically going to uh, just let us know if it's on or off and if the firewall or the service is not installed it will put a proper error probably something like uh you know and uh, restricted access or I'm sorry like uh, something on, the, on those lines then we got the HTTP which is just gonna monitor if the web server is up or down and the FTP okay so once you set this up all you need to do is just save it and obviously every time you make a major change you should always just restart the service so service in this case now is restart or reload depends on how how big the change is basically all right, you could always just do, it's not a bad idea to do uh, a restart for the Apache save as well. So Apache su restart, doesn't hurt because you're playing with the website configuration some to some extent. Anyway, so now you've done this, you can actually close this if you like. And we have shown you what it's needed to actually monitor a server, uh, I mean an agent from the Nagios uh, monitor tool. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna hold the, I'm gonna put the the agent down, and we're gonna see how long it takes to pick it up basically. So we're gonna do SSH. Uh, this is 65. Uh, okay. Uh, what is it there? Yeah. All right. Now. Sudo hold. Okay. That is gonna put a system down, and by doing this, okay. So now we ping it. Yeah, there should be no answer. I thought so. Even if the FTP, same thing, 65, shouldn't be an answer. What's the reason? Then say it. Nah. And we're just gonna go here quickly and we're gonna check it out just to make sure. Actually, this seems to have gone to the FTP. I was playing with it earlier. So let's just go to the website and no, there shouldn't be anything. All right, so as I said before, this does take a bit of time to pick up the, the set. Look, oh, here you go. And this is the reason why this one is, uh, is actually already away of this of the system being down is because you probably didn't notice but i did a bit of a change before in this file here and i said the service pink you see how there's a bit of a space here that's because i was playing with it 
uh, checking table is one, retrying table is one. So by putting this to one minute, I'm making the information to be a bit more accurate. But at the same time, I'm making the system a bit slower in other terms because there's more resources happening on the background. I mean, getting consumed by this, uh, you know, regular checkup service. So the, the 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 less time interval there is, the more accurate you got it. But a bit of a yeah resource problem. So we can already start to see how the services are starting to be down, even though we already know that the thing should be completely off. But yeah, the latest one that has been checked, so a minute ago, uh, FTP ping. Okay, so this hasn't been checked for 10 minutes, and this one hasn't been checked for two and a half minutes. So hopefully they will be aware of the new situation soon. But it doesn't really bother me. Look, three out of four. It's a matter of time for this one to pick it up. And anyway, so this is how you do it. From the web interface, there is not really a way from the Nagios core uh, software to actually add or delete any services monitoring. So everything needs to be done from the from the terminal. I mean, you could always just go and and do it, you know, from here. Oh, by the way, I created a Samba uh, file share, uh, share on the Ubuntu server, so here we are. That was pretty easy too. Anyway, so you could always just go here. Sorry, not here. I'll uh, probably be home. Uh, Nagir, where are you? So you can always just go here and, and do it that way there, but, you know, I mean, it's more fun if you do it on the command line. So that's what I do. And, yeah. I mean, I'm just hoping for this to go right soon, so I can cut off this video. But, yeah, look, anyway, you do get the picture, and that's pretty much it for now. Thank you for watching. See you next time.